My name is Dave Hollenbach, the host of From Embers to Excellence. My goal is to explore the many facets of leadership from the perspectives of some amazing people. In addition to leadership, I like to discuss mental health, PTSD, and overcoming adversity. If you have a favorite episode, I would love to hear about it. Message me through social media or my website, and I will share some free tools to help you achieve your goals. Please like, subscribe, and leave a review. If you haven't purchased your copy of my book, Fireproof, please grab a copy today. Thanks for listening. Today, I am speaking with Velma Knowles. She is a leadership expert and membership strategist who works with purpose-driven organizations to drive sustainable growth through membership consulting, leadership coaching, and relationship marketing. At the start of her career, Velma helped build the conservation legacy of the Bahamas. It was there that she learned the systematic approach for achieving sustainable growth in a unique way. And we're going to dig into that. We're going to talk about uh, some of, well, she's got a couple of books. We'll talk about uh, one or both. Um, and and then is it, you have two books or? Actually, I have three, but three. one of them is a co-author book. All right. Well, no uh, yeah, I'd like to touch on on your books and uh, really dig into what you're most passionate about and and really how you got there. So, uh, <laughs> you know, thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to have this conversation with me and, you know, just taking the time out of your day to to share your story. Thank you so much, Dave, for having me. I appreciate that. Let's uh, let's start with where it all began, you know, where, <laughs> where, you know, where were you born and raised and, and what were some of your early influences? Oh my gosh. How much time do we have? Cause you know how that goes when you, <laughs> but and anyway, for those, uh, for those that don't know me, uh, I like to say that I have some kind of an identity crisis going on because I was born under the, in, in the Bahamas, in the islands of the Bahamas, beautiful islands. And I was born there. And at a time, when the Bahamas was under the Commonwealth, under British ruling. So in, in essence, I was born a Brit, if you will. And then in the early 70s, the Bahamas went independent. So I like to say I was born a Brit. And then in the 70s, I became a Bahamian by law. And then in 2006, I became a United States citizen by choice. So I have that identity crisis going on, but born and raised <laughs> in the islands of the Bahamas. And it was there that I really got the opportunity right out of high school, I went right to work because that's usually what you do. You you graduate from high school and then you go get a job and then you get married and then you go get a better job. And, uh, you know, and so there's there's kind of a path there. And then, you know, for um, for the opportunity to have careers in the hospitality and international banking is huge in the islands, as you can imagine. But life took a different turn for me. I did after high school, I went right into work and I was totally blessed to work in the conservation environmental protection um, association world. So I went to work for a not-for-profit and that organization gave me an opportunity to be a part of a $3 million fundraising campaign. And when I was there, I did everything. I was the gopher. I would go for this and go for that, you know, and I kind of spent five plus years of my life there. And at the, uh, opportunity for this fundraising campaign. It was fantastic because I got to learn a lot of cool stuff and ended up being a part of changing the legacy of the Bahamas and their natural resources, the conservation uh, legacy. We raised over $3 million. We did it in three years. And it was there that I learned how to really understand a systematic approach for sustainable growth. Um, cool part of that is took that same model that I learned there and went to work for a for-profit company and the pay was better, but I was like, I just didn't have that purpose and that cause. I don't know if you've ever been stuck and you're like, man, I'm going to work, I'm doing the job and the pay is great, benefits are good, but my heart's not in it. And that's what happened to me. And so during that two year sprint that I was in the for-profit world, I ended up taking some of the lessons learned at the conservation organization, that nonprofit, and I put together a fundraising campaign for my education to uh, to take me to 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 the United States to do college. 
Um, my family, you know, did not have the means to send me to college. And so it was a big deal. I'm the first in my family about five generations back to go to college and to graduate. So for on that one. But I, I raised a three, uh, I raised a hundred thousand dollar plus fundraising campaign for college, totally philanthropic. And that brought me to the US and I got college education, undergrad and graduate degree. And then career life in uh, in the United States began. And that fast forward took me into um, a another association, a, a actually 60 million member organization, MEGA. And my territory uh, later in my career um, was very heavily involved in membership growth and development with um, marketing strategies. So that's uh, that's kind of like where it took me until now, where I coach and teach and train others that are in the purpose-driven as associations and nonprofit world, how to achieve sustainable growth for their organizations. I want to rewind a little bit sure. back to the Bahamas. So how did your how did your family end up in the Bahamas? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, I think five, six generations back, originally out of Europe coming over from England, right? Because at that time, the islands, you know, and a lot of other uh, countries are under the Commonwealth, which we probably heard a lot more about since this past year when the Queen Elizabeth had passed away. You know, you heard more about those um, countries that were in the Commonwealth. Uh, and so my family and my ancestors originally came over from England and then they made a life there, and uh, and then you know it. Uh, we continue on, in, in, and I'm sure if I go back in in time, there's probably somebody in England that's a, a brother or a sister from another, <laughs> you know, mother <laughs> kind of a thing. What, what did the What did your mom and dad do for a living? Oh, okay, cool. Well, uh, my father worked in a tour company, uh, so he took. Uh, you know, because it's hospitality, banking, and then, you know, more retail, but as far as the big industries. And so he was involved in a tour company. So he took people on tours. I guess that's where I get my energy and excitement from. Uh, but my dad would take people and they would, you know, so if you visited Dave as a, a tourist coming in, you would, um, you could be uh, like on a tour with him and he would take you through the islands and share different history and show you around and you'd learn about the country. And so my dad did that. And then my mom, her career, she spent 42 years working at the same company, a retail store. My mom worked for the same family business. Uh, she worked with, with that family for 42 years and she was a sales clerk. And uh, and only when the store closed its doors and they went out of business, did my mom then retire. So, yeah. So and, that's and, the sales side of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and when when you talk about conservation mm -hmm. in, in the islands, what was the primary driver for those efforts? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, the the Bahamas is a country where, you know, tourism is its number one industry. So about 70 to 75 cents on every dollar is from tourists that come in there. So what the tourists come for is the beautiful beaches, right? You know, crystal clear waters, white sandy um, uh, shorelines. They come for that, the beauty and the natural, natural resources, in essence, to enjoy that and to relax. And so there was a huge need in the, um, in the country to say, we have to protect our natural resources for our future generations. And so that was what this organization was all about. How do we, one, protect what we have and still allow the citizens and tourists to be able to enjoy them. So that became national parks like we have here in the United States, right? They're your parks as a citizen, but they're protected so that things stay intact and they're preserved for your children, your children's children, you know, and so forth. So it was first, how can we conserve what we have? Because it's the future economic uh, engine for that country. And the second thing is, how do we educate the citizens of the country 
and those that, you know, really love the country, they may be what we call second homeowners, like they have a home in the Bahamas, but they live somewhere else, so they come. So how do we get them educated on the importance of it so that they would financially and then personally volunteer their time or contribute their dollars to make sure that we can, you know, be able to continue that mission and, and protect our, our country's natural resources. So it was conservation, you know, preserving what we have. So protecting it and educating um, on it so that we have this, this ambassador group, this champion group that continues on beyond, you know, the time that I was there or, or others. Yeah. So was it, was there a lot of like overfishing or, you know, yeah, coral so, reef destruction, like that kind of? You know, it was uh, because tourism is the number one and and we live off of the sea more than off the land right so there's not as big of a farming community or cattle like in some of our states here in the u.s we had to protect the certain types of you know the natural resources like the coral reefs right so that they weren't bleached out we had to protect the uh certain types of marine life like the Nassau grouper, because grouper is a delicacy. And so you don't want to overfish it or conch, which is a snail, but people love it when they have, I know it doesn't sound good, but trust me, conch salad or some of the main dishes that you get to enjoy. And you're like, wow, what is this? So we did have to protect those and have what we call open and closed season. And then some of the birds as well. So there are some birds that uh, like a pigeon, we have a, a white crown pigeon there that is protected and endangered because it has been, you know, um, it, it has been, you know, a kind of like, a, 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 you know, abused in the sense of it's been more shooting going on to, you know, from gaming and from, you know, just enjoyment of the actual, you know, the ac actual animal that so people eat them, but they also do it for gaming and sport. So it's very, it's the same mission that we have here in the United States as to how do we protect and don't allow overfishing or, you know, um, allow open and closed season on, on different um, animals. Yeah. So it was what started off as like, uh, originally a passion for your country it led into this this growth of well i'm really good at you know organizing people uh raising money is that kind of like how you ended up in the united states learning more about that kind of stuff well i certainly learned the fundraising, you know, like, how do you go about fundraising? How do you go about marketing your personal brand? Because again, everyone that wrote me a check or deposited money into the account to support me to go to college, and God bless them for doing it. Every one of them did it with no other advantage, Dave, than they were giving for a good cause. And what I mean by that is, you know, in the United States, we have a tax advantage if we give to a charity or if we give to a nonprofit, even if I was set up uh, my educational trust fund as a not for profit or some other kind of uh, um, a means, there's no tax advantage if you live there to give me money. You gave it because you cared enough about me and you believed in me and believed in my dream. And so they, you know, the people that supported me, that came alongside, that helped me to be where I am today, that gave me that opportunity and invested in me, they did that because they truly cared about, you know, me as an individual. They understood my personal brand and I learned all, how the importance, we all have a personal brand, whether we know it or not. Some of us just live by default and others live by design. And, and I'd encourage everybody to, you know, live your life by design, understand who you are and your personal brand, how you show up. And that was one of the things that I learned because to go and ask someone to give you money, you know, they're looking at, do I know you? Do I like you? And can I trust you? Or do I trust you? And so those were key factors that I built my personal brand around. And then I also knew that relationships are foundational to your success. And so that opened the door for, for folks to support the cause of going and getting an education versus the cause of protecting your, your environment. And it can work for any association or any nonprofit that has a cause that they want 
you know, to to champion around and get supporters. Every time I, I when I when I do my um, when, when I speak at events and I share a story about the fact that I was able to raise that hundred thousand dollars, pure philanthropic, go to uh, college. I always have folks coming up after and say, hey, can you can I have you talk to my son or my daughter? Because college debt is really high, you know, and 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 so and I tell them it's it really gets back to the person because people don't, you know, people trust people more than they trust a company brand. So it's how are you showing up because you're the person I'm doing businesses with. When I when I do business and coach and, you know, do public speaking or training programs, they everyone tells me, so I'm going to work with you, right? And I'm like, yeah, I I am the brand. It's not like you're going to work with me and my company and then I'm going to put you somewhere else. Um, I'm the brand. I'm the one they're working with. And that's what I think is foundational is with associations, with nonprofits, with whoever, your organization, even your personal brand, um, you know, for your speaking business, Dave, it's how do, uh, you know, how do you show up so that they know, you know, you're the kind of person they want to work with. Um, so, yeah. What I, what I find really interesting is the connection that you've been able to make. Uh, like there's this thread through your conservation work in uh in the bahamas to your coaching business now and and these the the four drivers of growth and how you've been able to say okay so in in this conservation we had to figure out how to sustain growth and you know not only financially but you know the the actual environmental resources um and and so those four drivers of growth, the clarity in numbers, the alignment and resources, relevance and value and accountability and planning, those four drivers. Right. I'm, I'm interested in, were those four drivers, like, was that something that you figured out very early on or did you really develop that clarification later on in your career yeah. and said oh this is this is exactly what i was doing there but now this is how i apply it to people yeah yeah no you're 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 spot on um and what you know the 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 four drivers were not they they, they didn't like give me a, a package and they say here's the four drivers um so i've designed the four drivers of growth i call it the pathway principle and so it's a path that you get on and these are principles that you need to apply on that path in order to achieve whatever destination, whatever, you know, it is that your goal that you're going after. And so in, 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 when I, when I talk about it, I talk about the fact that you've got to understand, you know, first and foremost, what are, what are the numbers that, uh, that are important to you? So if it, in the conservation environmental, um, you know, example, it was, we needed to have a certain amount of money to sustain the organization. In a membership uh, association here, they may say, you know what? We need to have a certain number of members and a certain number of revenue. So it could be one or the other, it could be both. In, in uh, nonprofits that have uh, you know, more donor support, they're gonna say, we need a certain dollar amount to sustain us. And uh, so how do we go after doing that? So in coaching, it's what are your numbers? What is it that you, Dave, want to achieve? What are the goals? Because you have to have some numbers to go after. And where are you now? So it's your departure and then your destination. And the gap in the middle is what is it going to take? Well, you've got to understand, you know, is there going to be an investment you need to make, right? Personally, if you're going to have to get that coach, if you're going to have to go to a training program. And so that's the understanding your numbers type of thing, getting that clarity around the numbers. Alignment in resources is really talking about the fact that, you, you know, we, you know, we, we actually achieve more together. Uh, I mean, I, I wrote to a friend this morning on LinkedIn and I said, you know, he was commenting on something. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. Nothing great is ever accomplished alone. And so you want to on in an organization, you want to align your team, you want to align that board, if you have a board, and you want to align the leadership team and all your boots on the ground, so that everybody understands the direction. 
you, you know, because if you want true success in achieving something, it's going to take focus and it's going to take consistency, right? Mm -hmm. So in essence, getting that alignment, everybody is pushing together towards that. We're all rowing in the same direction. Um, and so I realized that I needed a I needed a team personally for my you know goal to go to college. I needed a certain amount of money, right? Because I did my budget, and I needed some people to help me get there because I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. So I had to align myself with the right resources that were going to come alongside me and help me to accomplish that. It's the same thing in a business. You've got to align. You know, resources are internal, so that's the team. They're also external. It's the partners and people that you work with, the vendors and, and suppliers that come alongside and make that relationship stronger. So when you get alignment and everybody's going in the same direction, um, you, you're, you're on your path, right? That pathway, it, you're on the path and you're moving along a lot smoother than if you're trying to pull everything all on your own. And then, of course, you know, you, you talked about, you know, getting getting clarity in the value. So, you know, people people need to understand what's the big picture, why and how do I fit into that? And why should I why should I join your organization? Right. When you think about a membership organization, why should I give you money to go to college? Why should I help Dave to become a better speaker? Right. You know, whatever that is, you've got to get clarity around that. And that needs to be communicated in a way that people understand. And it's easy to get. It's got to be value driven. I, I talk about value all the time because I think that knowing your value is your greatest competitive advantage. If you're looking for a career change, if you're looking for a promotion in your current job, if you're looking for somebody to give you money, if you're looking, whatever, your value is your greatest competitive advantage. And value is built all around your personal brand or the brand of your organization. Because even that NAC, even the conservation organization in the Bahamas, that example, it had a brand. We could put a face on that. People knew people that were the spokes, you know, represent the spokes champion for the brand. So it was like we had that association. And I always tell people when they work with me, you're working with the brand. It's me. It's not, you know, some other company. Um, and that's what people want to work with, right? It's all about the relationship. And then, of, of course, so you have that clarity in, in, in your value. And, um, you know, the, the final step, tell me again, what was it? I'm testing you and the and this, accountability and, of planning, right? Yeah. So so you've got to have the, you know, on the path, you know, you know, take without a final destination, without the plan that takes you along, you, you know, any, any path will take you anywhere. You just pick a path. So so if you are traveling from, you know, Florida and you need to get to California, there's a lot of different ways that you can get there. All right. But if you don't have a plan in hand, you could end up taking the longer route. You could end up getting detoured. You could end up a lot of different stumbling blocks. And so having that clear plan, having it built and and and, a, and working that plan and knowing that Plans are living and breathing. They need to change. So you need to be flexible in changing things because along your path and along your journey, you're going to encounter obstacles. You're going to have naysayers who, you know, are going to tell you no, right? You're going to, you know, so how do you, how do you bounce back from that? And having the plan keeps you on course. It's your compass kind of tells you, okay, we're going in this direction. Yeah, we hit something. We got some bad weather. Well, you know, we're going to weather through it. Or we're going to shift a little bit and it'll still get us there. How does that translate into the books that you've written? Wow, you are a tough one, man. You're tough. These are great questions. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So, so like many people, after my career, my comfy position, two two decades, so twenty years plus in the association nonprofit world. You know, starting off as the gopher. Um, in the classroom, teaching kids about conservation, working in public relations, membership drives, fundraising, um, all the way, fast forward 20 years later, to a vice president in the boardroom. So I went from the classroom to the boardroom. It was, uh, it was an opportunity in the end of 2017 where I had to make a choice. 
I, I was doing very well, very successful, loved my job in, as a vice president of member experience uh, in, um, in, in a multi-million member organization. Very successful, had a great group of people that we were working with. We, we, we grew that organization collectively 600 plus thousand members in three years. It was just, um, we were just rocking it. So if you ever have to go out, go out on a high, right? That's what they say in football <laughs> or something. Well, you know, in, in 2017, I had a decision to make uh, because as you know, in this, in this day and age, not just in the association or nonprofit world, but in any organization and in industry, there's a lot more consolidation going on. There's a lot more synergies. So it was, Hey, Velma, we'd love you to go to, you know, California or Delaware. And I could look for positions in those areas of the company, or I could take a package and, you know, kind of go somewhere else. And so I'm a woman of faith and I hope this is, you know, if anyone doesn't want to hear it, they could kind of pause this section. But um, so I'm a woman of faith. And after a lot of prayer and um, discernment, I got direction that, you know what, it's time for you to let it go, which was a big risk to step out and not know what I'm going to do. Um, so without taking my own advice at that time, I didn't really have a plan. I just knew that I didn't want to move because I'm in Florida and I'm, you know, close to the Bahamas and family's there and I love going back and uh, the food is always good and you, the same thing that every tourist goes for. So I ended up taking a different path. And I said, okay, I'm going to go work for another, you know, organization and, and do membership and marketing growth and ended up uh, getting tapped to do some of that project work, but not finding the company and the career that I wanted. And so I ended up, I guess, by default, getting people coming to me saying, hey, could you do some consulting? Can you do some coaching? Can you, you know, teach some of my folks what you know to do and what you have been successful with? So the next day, you know, I was in business. I, you know, I, I hung a shingle. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to do this for a little bit, see what happens. And I loved it. I, I love the people that I get to work with. And so I ended up starting Leaders Pathway. Uh, you know, thinking about the pathway that you're on and leaders pathway has a double edge meaning because it's the leader, the individual and the path that you are on. And leaders pathway is the company being that leader in their industry and growing, you know, and the path that they are on. So the first thing uh, I wanted to do was get out and speak and share what I had learned in my four drivers of growth and how it could work. So I ended up starting some speaking opportunities, getting booked and got on main stage, keynoting and all that fun stuff. Um, got a little rejection in there too, right? You know, everything the level set you, thanks, but no thanks, we don't want, you know, and and, and that's okay, right? Rejection is a part of uh, a part of life. So little learnings there. And during that course of time, I wrote my first book, which I felt very called to write. I felt like my leadership journey had a story in it where early in my career, I did not know how to be a good leader. I did not have a, a blueprint to help me there. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a coach early on, but I had individuals that I looked up to and I was like, well, how do they do it so well? And, you know, I'm messing up. I'm like a hot mess. I'm like a train wreck here. Uh, so as I was growing and learning on my leadership pathway, I, you know, said, oh, here's some of the lessons I've learned. And thankfully, you know, I'm a better leader today than I ever was before. And I continue to work on that. So the first book I, I shared and I wrote is The Valuable Leader. And The Valuable Leader is Seven Steps to Greater Growth, Value, and Influence. And it's these seven steps that I talk about in the book that I literally, you know, was like hot coals. I had to step on them, right, on this path going forward. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I'm messing this one up. How do I get better at this? And the more I learned and got better, the more value I added to someone's life and the more value I became to the organization that I worked for. Uh, so I also found that the more you raise your leadership value, the more the organization raises its success, right? So uh, so that was the first book I, I did. Um, and that was uh, huge for me. It was like cutting, I like to say it's like cutting a, a major artery, Dave, because in there is uh, stories, personal stories about 
people that are valuable leaders in my life. And there are also other stories of valuable leaders that I reached out to. And I said, you know, you're a valuable leader and someone has made a big impact on your life. So would you, would you contribute a story? So I always say this is like chicken soup for the soul for leaders kind of a thing. But um, so that was the first one out. And then the second book, of course, shamefully promoted is The Valuable Communicator. And what that book is all about is the power of your words and how to communicate. Because I think that organizations have a message. And if you're not clear on your message, then you create confusion in your marketplace. And, in, and leaders have a message. And if you want people to follow you, if you want to influence others, you've got to have real clear, you've got to be a, a valuable communicator. You've got to understand how to use the power of words, body language, tone. And uh, so that was uh, that was my second book. It went to a bestseller on Amazon. Yay, yay. Um, and uh, so I'm very, very thankful for that. And then I did a third book, which is co-authored book with a few other um, team members. And that one is Living Beyond Purpose. And so I have a chapter in that book about really finding your purpose and your path. And, and it's my story about finding mine. Uh, this this blows my mind that you hit those three things and you know when i when i talk about leadership i i and you know when i'm coaching people or or doing a workshop and i talk about knowing you know being clear on your purpose knowing what your purpose is right and being able to communicate that <laughs> Your communication ability, that is the foundation of all effective leaders. Yes. You know, without without good communication skills, you'll never be successful as a leader. Mm -hmm. And and then you talk about the seven steps uh to, to becoming a, a valuable leader. So uh, and, and the you... first step, you just said it, Dave. The first step in here is learning to listen. And, and listening well. And what does that mean? And uh, so, you know, the cool thing here is uh, I really wanted this to, you know, yeah, it was my first book and I really wanted it to be something that, you know, here's what I've learned. I don't want anyone to make the mistakes that I've made. So I'm hoping that it will be a blessing to people and really move them and help them increase their value. So in this book, you get nine free videos, you know, that once you get the book, there's a code you go get the videos tells you where to go get them that I talk about uh I think they're like one two minute long videos and not that long but I talk about each one of the seven steps a little bit in an intro and a conclusion and then you also at the end of each chapter I said so okay great we got to be great communicators how do we do that so there's really easy um there, there's three steps at least three steps action steps that I say I want you to go and do these steps they're easy steps, but they're hard to implement. And that gets back to, you know, the whole idea of staying focused and being consistent with applying what you learn. Now, you said that, well, maybe at the heart of uh, your, that, that driving purpose of writing that book is hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, keeping people from uh, making the same mistakes that you made, that's sort of an inspiration there. Can you talk about maybe one of the more profound lessons that you've learned in your, sure. in your career? Yeah, sure. No. Uh, so I, I, I always, when I, when I, when I do my, one of my training or speaking programs, I, I get to the place of a story and I, I ask the audience and I'll ask folks here that's listening on this. So if you're listening on this, think how you would answer. And my question is, so how many of you know of or have a difficult employee, right? So you either know of a difficult employee, right? They're a peer in your organization or, you know, you have a difficult employee that you are managing or leading, you know, and most of the times hands everybody in the room. Yeah, I know of that person or, you know, yeah, I've got that person. I know exactly what you're talking about, Velma. And I say, I used to be that person. <laughs> okay. And what and where I go with this story is my biggest lesson is um, that I want to share 
is that sometimes the thing that is your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. And what that means is if you don't know how to manage that, if you don't know how to leverage your strength, you know, you could use your power, your strength for evil, or you could use it for good. And with me early in my career, you know, I, I always, you know, was a, a great communicator in that I have no problem getting up in front of a group and, you know, rah, rah, the cheerleader, get it going. So I, I knew the power of communication and that it could build people up. You know, it could, you know, encourage people, inspire people, like you said here. What I didn't understand is that you could also use that communication, that skill set, that power, and you could destroy people. Right. You could say things that are hurtful that, you know, that you you could be very direct and blunt and and mean it with good intentions. Like, hey, I just want you to be clear. Right. And it turn out to be something that that uh, that that really damages someone. And so as a leader, you don't realize that you have such a strong power in communication. And I didn't realize that. So as a leader early on, I was really, really good at getting things done very good. You know, Hey, we're going to get this project. We had great results. You got it. You know, we're on that marketing campaign. Membership is growing, you name it. But the people that were having to come alongside were like, Oh man, this is painful. Right. You know, because I was all about the results and not necessarily the relationships. And it was a lesson that I needed to learn. And I, you know, I had a good, leader at that time say, hey, there's an opportunity for you here because you know how to get things done, but you can't just try to do things on your own or, you know, not, you know, build the relationships with people that you need to get you there. So I did a couple of things. One, I invested in getting to know myself better. I did training, got a coach. Um, Dave, it's crazy. I even got certified as a um, a, a certified human behavior consultant. So I administer DISC, which is a you know communication tool to help you understand your preferred style. I went to Dale Carnegie and graduated as a co- I graduated from there, and then they said, "Hey, we'd love you to coach others." And so it's kind of ironic that the thing that you know was once my greatest weakness, I've learned how to use it to be the greatest strength. And now I teach people about the thing that I struggle the most with. And I'm on, you know, public speaking. And I I wrote the book, The Valuable Communicator, telling that story about it's, yes, you want the results, but you don't want to do that and sacrifice it without the relationships. And your ability to communicate ensures that you do just that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's a... (laughs) (laughs) As a mouthful. So, well, I mean, for so many, it until and what really struck me is, is one of your leaders pulled you to the side and said, "Look, you've got an opportunity here to truly be great." Yeah. But maybe, well, I mean, really, like pointing out maybe one of your blind spots because until exactly. they until they spoke to you. Did yeah. you have any idea that you no, were? No, I, I was like, I was like, hey, you know, we're we're rocking because again, you know, sometimes we we in business we think, well, you know, I'm hired to get results, and so you know, I'm a driver, I'm a go getter, I'm going to get you results, and and when you do get success that way, right, then you're like, oh, well, it's working because I'm getting results, I'm getting it's it's successful. You know, let's redefine success. You know, uh, it's 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 successful in that you hit the numbers, you got that result on paper. But how many lives did you impact for the good? What relationships did you build? You know, and how do you leverage them? And it, you know, I I can truly say, and I, I never I never used to be able to say it, Dave. I I felt like, boy, that's too prideful to say. I'm the valuable leader. You know, I always thought that. Well, you know, and um. And I don't mean it in that sense. What I mean is for me or for you, I know that my value has increased as a as a leader. And the way that I can tell you that is people that were on my team, that were my staff members, that once said, 
boy, when I first worked for you, man, you had me crying, you know, um, now tell me I, I would work for you in a heartbeat. I, I, in fact, they have, you know, uh, we've left companies, both of us gone separate ways and I have uh, more than one employee. And then I, th I had another position open in the company I was working with, reached out and they were like, we'd love, I'd love to come work with you. So, you know, when you have that kind of a change, that kind of an impact, you've made that kind of an influence and you've added that much value, then you have grown. And so I, I, now when I say I'm a valuable leader, it's because I've, earned that um I've, I've earned that right from going through where i was all about results all about success to where i am which is more about the relationship and the significance that i make in someone's life and i want that for other people so yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful thank you boma for for those listening that want to connect with you maybe employ your services uh, purchase your book. What's the best way for people to connect with you? Well, I finally made it easy for everyone. So, you know, I, I have that unusual name, Velma, and I always think of Scooby-Doo when mm -hmm. I think of that. Uh, but uh, Velma is one of the characters in Scooby-Doo. So it's V-E-L-M-A. And my last name is Knowles. And for those that think it, no, I am not a family member of Beyonce Knowles, but Knowles is no less K-N-O-W-L-E-S with one S. So it's velmanolds.com and they can reach me there. And you go there, you can hit, hit up uh, on LinkedIn. You can go to the YouTube channel. Um, you could connect with me and download some free resources if it'll help you as well. Awesome. And are there links to your books or is it best to just yeah. go to Amazon? No, you can go right through the site. Um, you can click and you can buy from there. If you buy from my website, uh, so all the books are out there. So if you buy from the website, they come directly from me, so you get them personalized, autographed. If you want, you want to get a better deal from our, if pricing is a driver, go to Amazon.com and you can pull them down from Amazon, as and you'll probably have a little bit more savings there because they got a lot more volume than than I do. Won't be personalized until we meet at some conference, but at that time, bring the book. I'm happy to sign it because I know the author. <laughs> so I will. Uh, I'll have the link to your website and the show notes. Um, now this is, this is for me cause I'm, I'm on your website and I, and I looked for oh. your books right? And, I, and the only one that I saw was three quick wins. No, to just go to, go to the, go to the menu, hit the resource tab. And when you go to the resource tab, the first thing you're going to see is some few, uh, 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 three different uh, resources that I'm giving away for free, which is the three quick wins to help associations drive membership, of course, six essential leadership lessons, which is in these are ebooks. And then um, how do you spot your leadership blind spots, which is what you talked about earlier. Uh, so there are some proven strategies, nine strategies. Those are all free for anybody that wants it. And right below that, it's the published books and you can learn more about the books. And then as you go uh, you know, further down, there are some workshops that I do, team experience. You can do a team leadership experience and um, your communication. You can learn about your communication style. Also find some balance in your life with the wheel of balance. And then truly understand your value by identifying things that are of value to you in your life. So yeah, just a couple of tools in there as well. Resource page on velmanoles.com. I'll, I'll have a link to your website. And for those listening that want to purchase your books, they'll go to the resources page and uh, you've got uh, a few uh, free offerings, uh, eBooks, and then you have the, uh, the three books that you mentioned for sale down there. So for everyone listening, make sure you check out VelmaKnowles.com. The link will be in the show notes and check out her books. Uh, there's a ton of resources on her page. So please check it out. Thank you, thank Velma. You. Oh, thank you, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening to this episode of From Embers to Excellence. 
please visit hollenbachleadership.com for additional content. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a review.